and to the proposition that all men are created equal. For Lincoln, freedom was the highest ideal of equality. It was to guide what we do to effectuate equality of opportunity. It's our duty and our responsibility in government to foster, protect, and preserve freedom. And so, you know, you have to ask yourself, what's our present trajectory? We started out with freedom. Are we staying true north? Are we, are we aligning our actions as, as legislators with freedom as our guide? I think we have cause for concern. Are we free today? What have our legislators done? on national and state levels. The government now takes 40 to 50% of your income. Are you free? Your state income tax, your federal income tax, your property tax, your corporate taxes on everything you buy, not to mention the inflation that you pay. The government has taken away every vestige of our personal privacy. I'm just doing this to give some context about the necessity of concern. We don't have privacy anymore. Our free speech is being attacked. If you don't think so, ask President Trump. The moment he lost the election, they took away his free speech on every media platform immediately. Freedom of thought. The media content and its algorithms are created to define your thoughts. Orwell turned out to be a prophet, didn't he? Because now, <laughs> the freedom of thought is being assailed. AOC in her Green New Deal says, we're gonna... One of ours has been raised. Please state your point. Um, my Chair recognizes Senator Carlin. Mr. President, the point of raising these issues is about freedom. Today's issue before us is about freedom. Many of us believe, and I am one of those people, that our last election was the result of widespread fraud that never got a fair hearing. Representative government never got a fair hearing. So we have these things contextually to consider and to wonder. Is the loss of freedom being incentivized by the course that we are presently on? Today we're talking about the Second Amendment. The Constitution, and this is what James Madison said, because we always get into this little thing about militia and individual freedom. The Second Amendment was created and is indispensable to individual freedom. That was its, one of its purposes. James Madison, who wrote it, said the Constitution preserves the advantage of being armed which Americans possess over the people of every other nation where governments are afraid to trust the people with arms. If the government's afraid, it's probably doing things that the people don't consent to. If the government's afraid and tries to control everything you do, including your right to have a gun, they're probably not on a good course. Ben Franklin said, to give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety, those who do that deserve neither liberty nor safety. And this one's interesting. George Mason said this. These are the people who had the input. These are the people who wrote it. He said, to disarm the people is the most effectual way to enslave them. It was the clear purpose and intention to give us the choice to be armed. And what are the purposes of being armed? As we said here today, number one, to protect the people as a whole and sovereign nation. Number two, to protect the fundamental right to self-preservation. And number three, the right to stand up to tyranny. That's what our founders thought. It was a boundary that empowered us to live as free people. And today we're told the Second Amendment is a bad thing 
because some people die as a result of guns. Those people seldom express the same concern for the preservation of 62 million of our unborn. America was conceived in liberty and her boundaries afforded by the Constitution were intended to preserve it. What we are talking about is the preservation of the Second Amendment. We have a duty, at least our founders thought we did, to protect the people and to keep them free. We're not on that course presently. We were given an inheritance of freedom by those who fought our wars here and abroad, by our founders. They paid for it at a great price, their own blood. We have a duty to teach our children about freedom, the price and responsibility of freedom. We have a duty to make sure they get the same inheritance we got. You know, I think we really not need to not kid ourselves any longer. Tyranny's not at the door, it's in the house. It would seek to redefine America as a nation no longer free, to make freedom appear evil and to make slavery a virtue. They will undoubtedly call us names. They will undoubtedly dehumanize us and degrade us. We will be told to cling to our guns and our Bibles. None of these things, none of the mockery should move us. There's no justification to deny law-abiding citizens the right to keep and bear arms. We have a commitment to keep to one another and to our children. This bill is part of keeping a commitment to freedom, our children's freedom. Strict scrutiny when you have runaway legislators is indispensable to its preservation. Strict scrutiny means preservation of Second Amendment rights. And as we've said, the people of Iowa will vote on this. They will have a choice to stand up for their Second Amendment rights. It is their constitution. It's not ours to take away, but to preserve. Thank you, Mr. President.